Hello everybody, my name is Sniper Fun. I welcome you all back to my next video here on YouTube. This next video I'm presenting is going to be the first attempt at me doing my top 10 lists of videos in the way that I do my discussion videos. Basically me presenting myself in front with the visual aid on the TV screen in the background. I did mention this in my channel update a couple weeks ago that I want to try it like this and this list is going to be the first attempt at that. So. Depending on how well it goes, let's see how it goes, and you can put in the comment section if you guys think I should go back to my old, you know, just continue doing, like, the slideshow discussion ones. I should keep it up like this, or maybe just do a balance of them. But this is my first attempt. It might not go as well as I hope, but I'm going to try my best and see how well it does. And I wanted to do this top ten list for a while, especially since this was announced. And it's basically my top ten new characters for Injustice 2. And for those of you who don't know exactly what Injustice 2, what Injustice for that matter actually is, it is a fighting game franchise now, because now there's a sequel, that's made by the creators of the new Mortal Kombat's with the DC heroes. DC heroes and DC villains fighting each other in the style of Mortal Kombat. So, we do know that there's a sequel coming out next year, and we have seen new characters announced, such as Supergirl and Blue Beetle and whatnot. But this is my list, and I personally wanted to do this list in on what 10 characters I personally want to see in Injustice 2. Now, before I get ahead and actually do my actual list, I wanted to say two things. I actually had this list pretty much done about a week or so ago, and then I had to redo some parts of it because some of the characters were announced, like Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was originally on my list, and I had to take him off because he was announced like last week. And then I did have Dr. Fate and Captain Cold on my list as well before, but I do recall hearing that they're actually considered for the game or confirmed for the game. So I'm like, you know what, I don't want nothing confirmed. That's why I took them on my list. Second, <laughs> I do remember hearing that the Injustice comic book story is actually considered canon to these games. So there's a lot of characters that are considered dead. But you know what, I say screw that because I really don't want to consider who's dead and who's not. Because this is just a big giant DC fighting game. It doesn't matter who's dead or who's not. These are fan demand characters, a lot of fan favorite characters that they want for this game, that fans and gamers want for this game. They can get these characters in there if, even if they want to. They might not be in the story mode. Put them just in for the battle. It's a fighting game for crying out loud. You just have them there just to be able to play as them in, in the fighting game portion of it. They don't have to necessarily be in the story mode. Or you could have some of them brought back from the dead. I have no clue how the story can go. But there you go. There'll be some characters in this top ten list that are going to be considered dead. <laughs> in the entire Injustice storyline. But you know what? I don't really flipping care because there's a lot of characters in here that I personally want and I don't care if they're dead or not. So before we get started, I want to say those two things. So let's get started with number 10 on my list for Injustice 2 newcomers and that is... and that is... Darkseid! Number 10 is Darkseid. Now, this, he wasn't originally on my list because while I do like Darkseid to an extent, he's not one of my most fan-demanded characters I wanted to really see in this game. But he's kind of needed because he is like the major villain for the Justice League, for like the DC Universe almost. Like he's a, you know, obviously a Superman villain and whatnot, but he's also technically a villain for almost the entire, you know, Justice League for pretty much every DC hero. And he is a major villain in the DC Universe. And the fact that he wasn't included in the first one was kind of weird. So you can include him in the second one because he's probably important to the story now. And also because he's flipping Darkseid. And you need to include him. He's like a big powerhouse character that can just deal a lot of damage. Kind of like how Bane was in the first one and stuff like that. Like, you know, even like Superman in terms of powers that he could do. You know, it, it, it's not even just what his moveset could be because, you know... You already know what Darkseid would do, like using all his powers, he'd be in a powerhouse, and just he'd be the damage giver type character. But because of his iconic status with DC, he is like one of the major villains in the DC universe. And the fact that he wasn't in the first game, in comparison to, you know, now the second game coming out, it's time to actually finally include him. He's not a character I personally really want to have. That's why he's number 10 on my list. But. I feel the need for him anyways, I do like the character anyways, to include him for the reason that a lot of fans do want to see him in the actual game. And that's the reason why Darkseid is my number 10 on Injustice to Newcomers. Number 9 is going to be Black Manta. Now, I he's also another character I didn't originally have on my list because while I do want to see him, he's not really a character I'm really super into wanting to have. 
Although I do see the need for why we need to have a character like him because he is an Aquaman villain. And I don't think the first game, I spent a while since I played the first one, I don't think the first one had an Aquaman villain. Or at least a straight up single Aquaman villain. But here's Black Manta. And like, you know, he could basically be like an evil Aquaman. He does like a lot of the same stuff that Aquaman does, like the fish powers, the undersea powers and stuff like that. And he also looks like a badass. He looks really flipping cool. He's historic to DC. He's a long-standing villain to Aquaman. And, <clears throat> like, how can you not have him? I, I, I personally want to see villains from other characters than just, say, Superman or Batman. We need villains in the in, in in justice that are not just their villains like you know they're for the other dc heroes because there are other dc heroes out there it's not just all about batman and superman and black manta like i said he, he has iconic status to dc he's a long-standing villain of aquaman I, he's a villain for aquaman for a for a hero that we don't really have a villain for yet and you know his moveset could basically be very original doing the, all the water stuff like and he basically fights pretty much like, you know, he has the speed and the water abilities and whatnot that like an Aquaman have and, and we finally give Aquaman his rival in Injustice. And he would probably make a lot of sense in the story and you know, I can't really say so much <coughs> about, you know, Black Manta. He's not a character I personally really want to have, which is the reason why he's at the bottom of the list, like not near number ten. But he's one that I can see why fans want a lot and I do kinda of like the character enough Quite a bit to actually at least have him on my list. Now let's get to number eight. Spectre. Number eight on my Injustice 2 newcomers list is Spectre. Now this is an, I wouldn't say he's a major DC character, but he is a pretty important DC character. He's not really a bad guy, but he's, he, he's I would, he's more of a good guy, but he's not really a bad, you know, good or bad. He's kind of just like, you know, he helps people, but he's not like, totally good like he's this mystical godlike creature that does like all these powers for those of you who don't really know exactly who Spectre really is and yes that kind of does make him a little overpowered like OP for this game compared to a lot of other DC heroes and villains for that matter but we have people like Superman who's already OP and can pretty much kick everyone's butt so you know what like Spectre he has that intimidating factor he's more of an out there DC hero He's not really like, you know, a Wonder Woman or a Flash or a Green Lantern or a Green Arrow. He's not like a mainstay, but he's important to the DC Universe as a character that they have in there. He's been around long enough to be, you know, popular enough and warranted enough and historical enough to the DC Universe to be warranted for there. He'd have an original moose at being all like, you know, being like all his godlike, mystical, like in the shadow type powers that he could do. He could have very, like, you know, very take like Green Lantern type moveset and just like, just make it more mystical and more crazy, <laughs> like, and he'd be a fun character to play as, and just, just who wouldn't want to have a character that looks like this, just, you know, he has the appearance of, like, a really cool character, and his whole backstory, and a lot of what he can do, his story, and his, his character, and how he fights, actually would be at least different enough compared to the rest of the characters already in Injustice, and ones that a lot of people, you know, ask for, to be warranted for. And a spot as a character in, in Injustice 2. So that's my number 8. Let's get on to number 7 on my Injustice 2 newcomers. Brainiac. Now, this is when we start getting into the characters that are were on my list originally. <laughs> Brainiac was originally like number 8 on my, on my first attempt at this list, but I bumped him up to number 7. Brainiac is a mainstay Superman villain. He is very, you know, you know high-tech brain-like powers. He matches Superman's, like, brawn with, like, his brain and stuff like that. Very technological. Very long-standing villain for Superman, for that matter. In the Justice League, entirely, for that matter. He is a villain that was missing from the original game. A villain that a lot of fans like, and a lot of fans do demand. He's not my most wanted villain, but he is there as a, you know, spot on my list, because it's, like, it is a and like I said, I, I'm not trying to put only villains from, like, Superman and Batman and whatnot on here. But he is, like, the Superman villain I really think should be in the game. Like, you should go focus on other villains, too. Like I mentioned with, like, Black Manta or you have, like, a Captain Cold or something like that. But Superman needs his villains, too. And not just, like, Lex Luthor or, like, Doomsday or Darkseid and whatnot. But Brainiac. Because... 
Brainiac is just Brainiac. <laughs> He's such an interesting character to the, to the DC lore. And just intimidating factor and he's not he's about like using his brain to intimidate you and beat you down like he's not brawn he's very like, like a brain type character so his moveset can be very technical in not just being like a button mashing type character but a character you might have to learn a moveset to and it might be an interesting moveset in general and it's a character that you know deserves to be in because it's freaking brainiac that's number seven let's try number six a sec. Robin. Now, you might be wondering why I have all the different Robins on here. I want to include Robin in the game. Because I know we had, in the first game, Nightwing. But I want, when I say Robin, I mean Robin as an entity. Robin as a whole. All Robins. Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Damian Wayne, all of them. Tim Drake, all four Robins in one spot. It's different costumes. Like, okay. Because in the first game, remember, we had, like, you know, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart as different costumes for Green Lantern and stuff like that. They had different costumes. So who's to say you can't just have, like, different costumes for different versions of them? Now, it might be weird, and, and I know it's obviously showing Red Hood here, but I mean, like, Jason Todd as actual Robin. Now, I know the age difference for some of these characters and heights and whatnot might be a factor in there, but I would say maybe if they pull strings a little bit, the story might make a little more sense if they maybe they age up like a Damian Wayne, or, you know, it's obviously younger Dick Grayson, so it's not Nightwing Dick Grayson, it's like Robin Dick Grayson. So they're all around teenager age. All you really have to do is age up Damian Wayne and kind of make them all around teenager, young adult age, put them in different costumes for Robin. They all pretty much almost fall the same. The only difference I would say is... Uh, I do know uh, t Tim Drake, and I think Danny Wayne used like staffs or some sort of weapons, which you really didn't see like Jason Todd or Dick Grayson use. But just go for more of a universal moveset for Robin, because Robin's a universal character for the Batman lore, and there isn't never been just one Robin. There's and there's even more Robins than these, but these are like the four major Robins. So there's a reason why I want to include those four specifically as costumes for Robin. But Robin has been with Batman in, like, the comics and the cartoons and the movies and all sorts of Batman media for years. I know we had Nightwing in the original, and that's, that's great and all. We had, you know, that's specifically Nightwing, so it's Dick Grayson. And if Nightwing's still in Injustice 2, that's pretty cool in and of itself. But here we have Robin as a whole, so you can still give Dick Grayson a Robin costume while still having maybe a Nightwing in the game. But then you have his younger self as a Robin alternate. It doesn't have to make sense to the story because if, he, if he's still around in the story, which he probably won't be if he's dead, um, <clears throat> you have the story focused around like Damian Wayne or Tim Drake or something. While, while the fighting game aspect, when you go and play the actual fighting game, you can pick whatever the heck Robin costume you want. Robin is needed for this game. It's freaking Robin. It's historical status to the Batman lore, Batman, every comics and everything. So that's my number six. Let's get on to number five. Beast Boy. Beast Boy is my number five. Now, this is when, like, we already have so far technically three Teen Titans in Injustice. The first one we had Cyborg, Raven, and Nightwing is obviously Dick Grayson, who was, who was the major Robin, you know, from Teen Titans comic books, cartoons, or whatever. Beast Boy is a historical character, not just with the Teen Titans, but for DC Comics in general. We should have more, some more of the younger heroes in general anyways. And Teen Titans already kind of got represented quite a bit in the first Injustice, but it still missed quite a few characters. There were two key ones. Obviously, you know who the other one is. Beast Boy being this one. You know, being able to shapeshift into animals, use all his, like, you know, animal powers to fight, his moveset would be different than anyone else in Injustice, because I don't really know any other DC characters that really can do that, per se. You know, he stands out appearance-wise. He'd be a younger hero in the universe, for the game and especially, and his moveset would stand out, and people want I see a lot of people requesting Beast Boy. Who does not want Beast Boy? I, every person I've seen requesting characters for Injustice 2... 
almost always includes Beast Boy on their list. He's demanded. He has moveset potential. He's historical to the Teen Titans and DC in general. You need Beast Boy in this game. He's <clears throat> not my most wanted uh, Teen Titans character, but he sure is heck on the list. High enough to be number five. Number four. Cheetah. Like I was mentioning before about villains from other characters from the DC Universe than just Superman and Batman, we get Cheetah. One of, if not the most, major Wonder Woman villain. Animalistic powers like the Cheetah. She's vicious, she can fight, she'll be fast and deal a lot of damage. You can go with the different renditions of her because there's been different, like, you know, for costumes, because there's been different versions of her. There's been versions of her that are full-on anthropomorphic Cheetah lady. And there's ones where, obviously, she's just wearing a Cheetah costume and she's like a cat burglar type thing. You know, so, and there's been different women that have been Cheetah. So you, it's like Jon Stewart and Hale Jordan, like I mentioned with the Robin thing. Different costumes to represent the single character entity. And she'd be vicious like a Cheetah, and she'd be fighting, she'd have a fast move that deals damage, like I just said. And like I said, we have villains for the other characters. We had, like, you know, Green Lantern, Batman, and Superman have their villains, but we need someone like Aquaman to have, like, Black Manta. Flash to have Captain Cold. Wonder Woman to have Cheetah. So, and I see her quite mentioned a lot. And she's kind of, I, I see her mentioned a lot, but not, I think, as much as I really think she deserves. Because she's been around in the comics for so flippin' long. And she's like the major villain. If Maybe not the major villain, but one of the major villains for Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman, you know, getting her new movie out. And I know Cheetah may or may not be in that movie. Um... You know, the push of Wonder Woman, how about you put in a Wonder Woman villain? And that's basically Cheetah. And that's my number four. We're almost to number one, people. Number three. Starfire. And I think everyone knew as soon as I said Beast Boy was not the only Teen Titans character on this list that deserved to be in there. I had a feeling that people would probably know I would be talking about Starfire. It's flipping Starfire. Magic alien using their magical abilities. It'd be kind of similar to, say, like, maybe a Raven-type character meets almost like a Green Lantern, but she still would be distinct and different enough to do it. She's been important to the Teen Titans comics and DC Universe for a long while now. Not just with the old 2003-like cartoon, but she's been around since, like, the 80s and whatnot. <laughs> you know, one of the younger heroes of the universe. We don't need just all the old, historic, older heroes. We have to have some of the younger people, too. And, and she's there with that ability to be one of the younger heroes. She's popular. She's demanded. I don't see, like I said with Beast Boy, I don't see a list of people requesting characters for Injustice 2 that does not include Starfire. She is that demanded. And she, like, she's popular, moveset, historic, which is like a lot of the characters are. And she'd be important to the story, especially depending on where they go with, like, the Teen Titans, like Cyborg, or if Raven and Cyborg are still in the game, or whatever the comic deals with them, or Beast Boy, or Nightwing slash, you know, you know, Dick Grayson and stuff like that, the story. And she'd be original enough character to be in the actual fighting game aspect of Injustice 2 that people, a lot of players will gravitate to. Now let's get on to number two on this list. Static. We, this game needs static. Electric powers, younger hero, just like Starfire. It depends on what version they first off get a static. If they choose the older static or younger static, but he'd probably be like a teenage, young adult type static. You know, his electric powers, which no character so far, in, at least in the Injustice game, actually does that. He's popular enough. He's, you know, his old 2000, early 2000s cartoon reinvigorated this character. He showed up in numerous cartoons since comic books, resurgence in the comic books and importance. A lot of people. Like, like this character, he's requested, he is super requested, he is like my most requested hero to be in this game, which might give away my number one. Um, <clears throat> but he's my most requested hero to be in this game. I'm such a big fan of Stat, he is such a cool, original character, moveset potential. He, he is a unique enough character, moveset wise, to be in this game. <laughs> and, man. He just looks so awesome. Depending on what version you would go for, which you'd probably go for something similar to like this, because that's like almost a standard comic book version for him. Um, 
He'd be so... And if you get the old voice actor from the cartoon, it would give me nostalgia overload. Static for Injustice 2. Now, before we get to number one, I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I'm going to quickly go through. I'm not going to mention why they're on honorable mentions. I'm just going to call the name, and that's about it, just so we can get to number one. But you'll probably know, like I said, it's stated so far why I put characters on my list. They stand out as new, unique, out there DC heroes or villains. They're personal choices. They're requested. They're popular moves of potential. That's the reasons you can pretty much come for and come up with why I put some of these characters on my honorable mentions list. They may not be up there with my top ten, but they are pretty freaking darn close. Jonah Hex. Booster Gold. Aqualad. Now you can go with this version or you with from, you know, Young Justice, or you can go from the Teen Titans one or whatever, because there's different variations on them, but they could probably do different costumes for that. Black Canary, Steel, Metallo, Vigilante, Wildcat, and Talia Al Ghul. And my number one most wanted new character for Injustice 2 is drum roll please that's Constantine I forgot there was another one <laughs> I totally screwed myself up there one more that was the last honorable mention drum roll please my number one most wanted new character in Injustice Tool is Red Hood Done. That's it. I don't have to say anything else. It's freaking Red Hood. And now people will be wondering, about, oh, but you said different Robins and you included Jason Todd. Well, technically, Jason Todd was Robin, but he's also Red Hood. So you can include both in there, him as a costume for Robin, but then also as Red Hood himself as, you know, anti-hero villain, where he has his own original moves at using guns and being, like, very Deathstroke type character, being very you know, villain-esque, but still have him as his hero side as a Robin. You know, you can just have different aspects of his, his you know, superhero villain life. Like, as Red Hood has his own individual character, which he's like the most requested, demanded character in this entire flipping game. I have never, it's just like I said with Static, just like I said with Starfire, just like I said with Beast Boy, I always see people request him. He is like the most requested character for this game. But then you could also have Robin with him as a costume doing Robin things. So it's entirely up to you. He has, he's either in the Rob, costume in the Robin slot or he's in Jason Todd's slot. You know, for <laughs> Red Hood. So, yes, that's my top ten new characters I want to personally see in Injustice 2. I hope you guys like this video. Put in the comments section what you guys think. Do you guys agree with these characters? What what new characters do you personally want to see in Injustice 2? We'll discuss it down there and we'll compare my list to yours. Hope you guys like this list. And remember, I also said to ask to please let me know what you think about this way of me doing my top 10 list. Because I think this way is a little more personal for me to you to be on screen talking to you rather than my voice over like like a slideshow. But I'm not going to entirely give up that, at least not yet. But I want to see your opinion. Should I go fully and do a top 10 list like this, or should I stick to that or kind of do back and forth and mix? Which is probably what I personally want to do. But this is my first top 10 list doing it like this. I hope you guys liked it. Put in the comments section what you guys think. Not just on the top 10 list, but my way of doing the top 10 list like this and give me some you know, feedback on if you guys like it like this or not. My name is Stephanie Swan. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you all later in my next video. Bye.